Welcome to Commander Tune-Ups, the Nipping Nears most revered series. Yes, this time we're upgrading our patron Arthur's Tormod and Kamal partner deck. What? Ooh. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nipicking Nerds. You can check out our Discord, where we have EDH games firing constantly. And you can check out our Patreon, where we have you pledging money to us because you love us constantly. Or just enjoy the, the daily content and subscribe. Yes. So today, we are doing, well, a Commander tune-up, where we take a patron submitted deck. They said, I want to be your patron. They got in. They're in the right tier. And guess what? Now we're doing their deck. They got in. There's no vetting process. We will let anyone be a patron. And in a certain tier, boom, you get a tune-up. This one has certain criteria, as they all do. Uh, power level goal, we're going, shooting for like a 6 or a 7. We're not trying to like highly tune a combo deck, and we're not trying to make a janky casual precon style deck. So like right in the middle, kind of like the sweet spot. Uh, in terms of cards we can't add to this, no Phyrexian altar, or cards worth $60 plus. At the time of this tune-up being submitted, those were different things, but they are not now. It, oh, really? Wow, yeah. It's like $90. Yeah, Phyrexian altar is insanely overpriced. Uh, it, the cards are going on a crazy spike, but that's a rant for another day. The stimulus end times are here. So before we get into the whole deck tech and fixing the deck process, we got to read the commanders, of course, starting with Tormod. Three and a black for a 4-2 legendary creature, Zombie Wizard. He has partner. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. And the other commander, Kamal, Heart of Krosa. Six green green for a 5-5 five, five human druid. Obviously it has partner. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn. One and a green. Until end of turn, target land you control becomes a 1-1 one, one with indestructible vigilance and haste. It's still a land. So I think the basics seem very obvious. We're going to make lots and lots of these 2-2 two, two zombies with Tormod, triggering him over and over again. And then... We're going to overrun them with Kamal. Yeah, we don't really have to worry about closing too much. We got a closer right in the command zone. So first category we're going to get to is triggering Tormod. We got to get this guy super angry so that he makes two twos. Yep. So we're going to start with these creatures that come back over and over again for very low cost. Gravecrawler. Wow, this one is pretty awesome in the deck. He's a 2-1 that just you can cast him from your graveyard. If you control a zombie. I think we're going to control a zombie. How are we going to make zombies in this deck? Well, Tormod's a zombie. Oh, and he makes zombies? Oh, okay. Well, that seems pretty easy. Yeah, Blood Gas comes back with Landfall. Reassembling Skeleton comes back for two mana. A Nether Trader comes back when one of your creatures dies, but you just have to play one black for it. So all four of these are just going to be in and out continuously. One of the main sources to ensure we're going to get not only a zombie every turn, but potentially a zombie every single turn, so four in a cycle. Uh, you know what's funny? Nether Trader with Phyrexian Altar goes infinite with Tormod because you keep... Well, that's that's the problem, actually, with Phyrexian Altar. He wanted to cut it because he won every game where he cast it. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. He was like, I just don't... Um, I don't want to win with Gravecrawler or Phyrexian Altar every time. He actually didn't have Nether Trader in the deck, okay. but there's so many ways to win with Phyrexian Altar and all these zombies. He's like, just get it out. It makes the deck, it actually makes the deck less cool because you don't lose to Tormod Kamal, you lose to <laughs> Phyrexian Altar. Yeah, I mean, you lose to Phyrexian Altar, uh, all these infinite combos. Yeah, yeah that all makes this sense. stuff. Uh, next we have Egon, God of the Dead. Brand new threat from a brand new set. It's not brand new. It's still Trix, brand new. Trixhaven's basically out. Shut up. It's not out yet. Not when this video released. I think our next video is best Trixhaven cards. <laughs> Two and a black for a legendary creature, God 6-6. Six, six. He has death touch. Obviously, your 6-6s six, all need death touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile two cards from your graveyard. If you can't, sacrifice Egon and draw a card. He's an MDFC, so his other side is Throne of Death. One black for a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. Two and a black, tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard, draw a card. So actually, both sides can work for us here. His front side can be a big old creature if you need a beater that makes creatures on your upkeep. And then the other side mills you, and then you pay three to make a zombie and draw a card, basically. Yeah, it can help put stuff like Nether Trader, Gravecrawler in the graveyard. We'd prefer to just never draw them and just have them in our graveyard already. Because that's basically just, if you mill Gravecrawler, you just drew a card. Is that true? It is. I mean, you functionally have access to another card. So yes, you basically <laughs> drew a card. Egon, uh, both halves work. Uh, there's also Woe Strider, which is sort of a viscerous variant 
but this one can escape. Now, when you pay the cost to escape, you exile four cards, trigger Tormod, get a tap a zombie. Mm -hmm. Then he leaves your graveyard to come into play, get another zombie. It's two instances. That's uh, that's pretty awesome. And he's a sack of light. We're definitely some sort of aristocrat stuck here. He comes with a goat, chump blocker, sack outlet, <laughs> scry one, and then one of the cards I think is the coolest that I just could not find homes for, but it's so good in this deck is Daring Fiend Bonder. It's three and a black for a five one with haste that has to attack, but none of that matters. You can pay one and a black and exile it from your graveyard to put an indestructible counter on one of your creatures at sorcery speed. So you get a zombie, and now you just make Tormod indestructible he's not going anywhere yeah he's just a 4-2 little beater that's <laughs> randomly indestructible weird that for Tormod to be indestructible like imagine like this fragile skeleton man yeah. like who's he's a 4-2 he's literally weak he dies to a grizzly bear but he's indestructible you like punch the skeleton inside your chin in the face can't doesn't do anything although dead weight still too much weight <laughs> oh, oh this is ridiculous <laughs> I'm just gonna die uh, how about, how about just, some, some other ways to get zombies uh, some other ways to get zombies well a classic commander, one of the very best commanders for graveyards. Uh, Marin of Clan Thal Toth. At your, you get experience counters, but at your end step, you either get a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield or at your hand. Either way, we're getting a zombie. Yes. Yeah, it's just... Tormod is worded so well. Anytime a card leaves your graveyard. Doesn't have to be a creature. Doesn't have to be anything specific. Doesn't have to go to the battlefield or your hand. Wherever we send it to exile, battlefield, or hand... We get a tap two to zombie as long as it's not all at the same time. Yes. So we're going to just, uh, there's so many cards that take stuff out of your gear, right? It's, it's, there's a million and one different things that just take a card, put it on the battlefield, put it in your hand, put it in your library. There's there's so many. How about exiling cards from graveyards? Withered Wretch, Scavenging Ooze, and Death Rate Shaman all pull double duty. They work on you. It pay, It's pay one mana, create a two two tap zombie, or graveyard hate them, and then Death Rate Shaman is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, Graveyard Hate is just, it's just, it's such a great extra cherry on the top where it's like, these cards are all going to do the things we want and act and work in our deck. They have those synergies. And on top of that, they're also going to hate out other things their opponent's trying to do. They play their Eternal Witness. No, thank you. Get it out of here. Yeah, it with these in play, it does hard counter certain things. You can't cast a reanimate spell. You can't cast anything that targets something in a graveyard. You can't flashback anything. Those are just going to go away as soon as my ooze comes out. It's very great. And actually, other stuff I didn't notice... I almost cut Ramming Up Excavator from the deck because I'm like, well, we don't really care about playing lands from our graveyard. But when you play a land from the graveyard, you get a stupid zombie. So I was like, never mind, get back in here. And then I added one of my favorite cards, Molder Hulk, which gets lands from the graveyard to play. Yes, I don't. Uh, Molder Hulk is a BZ exclusive. He loves that card. In this deck, it's going to cost like three mana. It's a 6-6 six, six, and then it ramps you. Well, I'm not arguing with it being good or anything. I said it's a BZ special. I love that card. And it's good. Yes. So yeah, uh, both those lands leaving. Uh, we have Phyrexian Lacomation. Let's just grab creatures from our graveyard to our hand. Just an awesome enchantment. What is that worth nowadays? Like nothing. Really? It's really cheap. Uh, That's shocking. Yeah, so it's two mana and two life to just get a zombie and get a creature in your hand. This is this is good rates for things. Mm -hmm. These are the, like the three big enchantments where you're just going to go crazy. Oversold Cemetery gets you something back to your hand every turn. As long as your graveyard has enough stuff in it, it will. And then Tortured Existence. It might be the best card in the whole deck. Black for an enchantment. You can pay black and discard a creature card to return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Wow. So we can just... I don't even care what creatures they are. Pick two creatures, loop them, and then it's pay black, create a 2-2, while also, in the end, you end up eternal witnessing your best creature back to your hand. My what? god, this card is so messed yeah. up in this deck. Yeah, I didn't have words to say because that's so cool. Um, You're just going to make 2-2s two every time. And again, you're just going to be able to get the best creatures in your graveyard to your hand. We're going to be putting creatures into the graveyard all the time because we need cards in our graveyard to trigger our Tormod. As you can tell, this deck has a lot of focus on Tormod. We're going to trigger him like 50 times a game. <laughs> that's our plan. But this is what, like... I think maybe the coolest card we added is the Cauldron of Eternity. 10 black black for a legendary artifact. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. And you can pay two black tap and two life. Return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield only at sorcery speed. So this card reanimates. Uh, just puts things from the graveyard to the battlefield, meaning we get a zombie. And then from there on out, whenever something dies and goes to our graveyard, well, instead of staying there, it's going to go onto the bottom of our library. Which means we get a zombie. Every time something dies, it triggers in the graveyard and then it leaves the graveyard. <laughs> Such like the absolute perfect card. And we're filling our graveyard as we're about to talk about. So it's going to cost black, black. You only need five creatures in the graveyard to make it cost two mana. 
I think it's hilarious because I think a Cauldron Eternity Nambo is so often with graveyard type decks where it's just like, sure, it kind of works. I get to do the reanimation, but then my creatures go to the bottom. I don't want that. Oh, wait, we don't mind in this deck because we actually get zombies for that. Just absolutely stellar piece of addition by the nitpicking nerds. But now we're in the next category. Well, we have all the ways to move around the graveyard, but we got to fill it up. we got to get a graveyard first. Yeah, some simple ones. Uh, I'll just throw them on screen because these don't really need to be read. No. Uh, Stitcher Supplier, one of the best self milk cards ever printed ever mm -hmm. uh glow spore shaman and skull prophet uncommons from sets that came out in the last two years as an added bonus <laughs> glow spore shaman puts a land from your graveyard on top which gets you a zombie burr 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 I, I can't stop talking about how many of these cards get you zombies by the way the next three fill your graveyard while also getting you zombies because yep. they have dredge golgari thug life from the loam and stinkly nymph not only <laughs> this <laughs> there's so much to, there's so many zombies not only does life from the loam Return lands, getting you zombies. But then the dredge ability itself, when you replace the draw, it comes from your graveyard, getting you zombies. When Golgari Thug dies, it has the random throwaway text to put a creature from your graveyard <laughs> on top of your library. And that gets you a zombie. We were going to play it anyway, but it's like, no, let me spot you one more zombie, dude. And Stinkweed Nip has pseudo death touch. Bad death touch. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> next, <laughs> some of the room. <laughs> okay. Now these next ones actually... They fit perfectly with a video we just did. What was it released? Exactly yesterday from this video. Mm -hmm. uh, their removal spells, their ramp, but they also work with our deck. Uh, Plague Crafter, we're going to sacrifice a creature on the battlefield, put it into a graveyard that's filling a graveyard and removing stuff from their battlefield. Shikmal, same thing. You're going to Doom Blade a uh, creature on the battlefield and fill in your graveyard. Yeah, perfect example. We actually cut, I cut Cultivate and the three visits from this deck because... We can add stuff like Diligent Farmhand, which is just three mana, get a land, but it's a creature that can sacrifice itself and then go in the graveyard. I you forgot to mention the most important part of Diligent Farmhand. Oh, it counts as a Muscle Burst thing. in the graveyard. I'm so glad you remember. So if you were to put Muscle Burst in this <laughs> deck, which we did not, it would count as an additional Muscle Burst. Uh, Fiend Artisan's last way. This one just tutors up guys. I think I like it as a way to tutor up some of your really tricky boys, like Bloodgast and Gravecrawler, where they're just going to keep making zombies. Fiend Artisan is just a creature birthing pod, which we totally want in this deck. Again, we want to put creatures into our graveyard and then throw those creatures into the bottom of our library, the anyway. top of our library, our hand, uh, exile, anywhere, as long as they leave the graveyard. We don't want them to stay there. No, even just our hand right back to the graveyard. And the last one is Mesmeric Orb. This mills everybody, but whenever you untap something, you mill that many cards. So if you, you, know, you untap for your turn, you untap your... Oh, man, I wasn't even thinking about this. All the zombies enter tapped. When you untap them for your next turn, you mill that many cards. You can mill like 20 cards, and then from their point, it's going to be trivial to win the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, when we mill ourselves 30, 40 cards, we're, our deck is just going to convert into a win from there, whereas most decks won't. But it also can like double as this weird win count where if you can just keep yourself alive for a little bit, yeah. they're just going to get milled out eventually. I mean, this card mills so fast. It's yeah. crazy. What if they have a huge turn where they sent a bunch of things sideways and then you play Mesmeric Orb? It's like, well, now you're going to mill 40 cards. Were you expecting that? Probably, Probably not. not. <laughs> All right. So we know how we're going to make zombies and we're going to fill the yard to make those zombies. But that's one way of going wide. But we need some alternate, maybe backup ways of going wide so that we can talk about our boy, Kamal, when we get to winning the game. Uh, well, Worm Harvest is our very first one, which, believe it or not, when you cast it, makes a zombie. Guys, it makes a zombie. Two, Golgari Hybrid, Golgari Hybrid, Golgari Hybrid. Create a 1-1 one, one green black worm creature token for each land in your graveyard. Retrace, you may cast a spell from your graveyard by discarding a land in addition to paying its other cost. So when you cast this from the graveyard, the way it works, we just, we I remember I just listed all the zones it can move to. There's actually another one, the stack. Uh, that's actually moving out of the graveyard to the stack, and that will trigger a zombie. <laughs> There's so many different ways to put cards in the graveyard. So many different places to put cards in the graveyard. There's like every direct, they're just flying out every direction. This one is sort of like, all right, my Tormod got killed twice or something, and it's going to be real hard and slow to rebuild. But I did fill my graveyard. All right, I'll just make uh, 15 worms. Go ahead. And then... If you let me untap, slam Kamal and kill someone. Then do it again. Like, you can go, like, say you have 10 mana, it's late game. You can just, if you have, like, six in your graveyard, you can do it twice. And then you just have 12 worms, and you didn't even have, like, this huge graveyard. You just had six lands because, you know, they're they're, they're going to get left over. They're going to get stuck in your graveyard most of the time. And when, unlike 
the most retrace cards, this one actually gets better when you retrace it. You discard a land. It adds to the count. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's synergy within the card, which is very cool. Yeah. And Izoni, Thousand Eyed, says undergrowth, count creatures in your graveyard, make that many 1-1s, one and then she's even a sack out from there. We might not even need to get that far, but it's just going to come out and make like 11 tokens. Speaking of zombies, Field of the Dead is now in this deck. I added it. Couldn't help but add who, it. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that I would add Field of the Dead? It makes untapped zombies, and you're just going to go crazy. You don't have to do anything. Just play this card, and now you're going to start making zombies. You don't have to do anything. Literally, just stop playing, and you'll get zombies. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, we have uh, Agadine's Awakening, which will return a bunch of things to the This card is so good because it's it's like it's weird because the other ones of these MDFCs are bad spells. This is a good spell. This is a spell we haven't really seen before. It's Yeah, exactly. It's super strong. Again, just cast it for like four. So you spend seven mana on this for four and you get five things from a grave to the battlefield potentially? Yeah. That's crazy. If you have a zero drop, I don't know if we have any of those, but you get at least when X is four, four creatures, which is... Definitely a sizable amount when we're going to bring out... We know we're bringing out Kamal at some point. Uh, last one, Living Death. This has a chance to go poorly for you, but I did mention earlier we have access to Deathrite Shaman, Withered Wretch, and Scavenger Goose. Probably not going to be too uh, blown out by Living Death from their side, and they're going to get destroyed on our side. Yeah, and just like the classic Living Death thing is we have tons of sack outlets. You throw it all in your graveyard, then you cast your Living Death, and you just get... A completely insane amount of value. And I'm 99% sure, since you have to resolve the spell in order, and it exiles cards from graveyards first, after the spell's done resolving, you get a zombie. A tapped 2-2 zombie, if that's useful to you, after you win the game. <laughs> well, we haven't won the game yet. Let's go to how we're actually going to win the game. Well, first and foremost, the easiest one, we're just going to use our commander, Kamal. That's, that is exactly what he's there for. He's there to provide the color green. And be our wing con because Tormod's what the deck is all about. Yeah. Like that's he's the centerpiece. He's what the deck is doing. Kamal's there to be green. He's our closer. And to close out the game. Like, yeah, exactly. You you bring just like a pitcher. Like you bring him in only at the end of the game. We have we've had Tormod in all games. He's, doing he's great. pitched eight innings straight. It's the ninth inning. Closer. We need that closer bringing Kamal. We need a fresh man. If you want to use a WWE reference, we're tagging in that's Kamal. A, it's a hot He's tag. Clothesline everyone. Yeah, with, if you've never watched WWE, hot tag to Kamal. Yes. He comes in, he absolutely destroys everybody. I mean, he basically takes on the whole other team. Yeah, he is... You don't need a crazy board state. He's essentially going to be a guaranteed kill on at least one player. And we can do this all day, baby. Because the next thing we're going to do in winning the game is protect him. Uh, so there's Sylvan Safekeeper in this deck. That's a big headache. It's green for a 1-1. One -one. Sack a land. Target creature you control gains Shroud. So if this is out and you cast Kamal and he resolves... They're not doing anything to him. Our next thing is we have Dread Return to protect him. Now, actually, this works with any uh, reanimation spell, but Dread Return is going to be very good in our deck because it won't cost us mana once it's in our graveyard, so it's going to be completely insane because we have a bajillion guys. Uh, so you go to go to combat. Uh, he's going to trigger at the beginning of combat. So if your opponent would like him not to trigger, which they obviously don't want him to trigger, they have to go, okay, use my removal spell in your main phase still. Okay, right. They kill Kamal. He goes to your graveyard. You, you then, because a spell was cast still in your main phase, get back priority without moving to combat. Then you cast your dread return, return him, and attempt to go to combat again. They would have to have a second removal spell then to stop this from triggering, which they most likely don't. Yeah, and dread return costs no mana when you flashback it. Mm -hmm. And even just because I like saying this, it gets you a zombie. <laughs> Because it exiles itself from the graveyard. So you're going to get an extra tap zombie there. You're going to get two tap zombies. Because every single card in this freaking deck makes a zombie. You're yeah. going to get two tap zombies because Dread Return is going to trigger upon exiling itself. Yep. And, and it's going to trigger upon bringing out whatever creature. Yeah, so just for out. fun, two more tap zombies. Uh, also, if they go to kill him, Malachar Rebirth is an MDFC. We're not going to play this card because it's an instant. So we're going to swap out a land for it so we don't have to put like a non-creature in the deck. It's already a land. Oh, he, was, he would leave? All right, now he's going to come back for one mana. Uh, you don't get to terminate him or whatever. He's just back, and then I'm going to go to combat again. Also, Lightning Greaves is here. It's kind of here for Tormod, but if we can get it on Kamal, you're still not killing him. Exactly, yeah. I mean, he's a big fatty. you got to just... If you throw the boots on him, it's... He also he hits pretty hard, right? He pumps himself. Yeah, he's a 5-5. Five -five. The punches for eight. Right. Boots gives haste, so he can join in on the attack, turn you play him. Uh, there's also a couple other... We want some non-Kamal ways, because there's a chance 
that plan A backfires, just like with Tormod. We had alternate ways of going yeah. wide. Now we have alternate ways of, of winning the game. What what are those? Well, I was going to say, so you're, you're playing Kumal, obviously. Yeah. Somebody Emmer cools you and they exile him forever. Now we have to figure out how to win without him? <sighs> oh. Did they exile him from the graveyard at least? No. No, oh, no. You exile him from the battlefield with your own card. Didn't even get a zombie. <laughs> with your so, deadly rolling. No. <laughs> yeah, so we don't we don't have Tormod and we don't have Kamal. So we, we, we throw out a worm harvest or maybe a field of the dead triggers a bunch of times. Then we use undead war chief. It says your zombies cost one less and it gives zombies plus two plus one. So it just doubles the power. Yeah, exactly. So you just, I mean, it triples the power of, uh, if it's a one, one zombie somehow. We don't really have those. <laughs> well, yeah, I figured, but, but uh, it'd be cool. It's cool to say it triples the powers. Uh, yeah, it's, this is just makes all your guys beat him for a ton. We have a ton of dumb zombies laying around because like we said, everything in this deck makes a zombie for no reason. Uh, so Undead War Chief just doubles their power, beat him for a time. Yep. And next is, this is just the most synergy card ever. Sir Conrad the Grim. Whenever a creature dies or leaves your graveyard, that happens all the time. You're telling me I can use Tortured Existence to just continuously deal one to everyone ev both ways, right? So black deals two damage to each opponent. That's Discard, trigger, return, trigger. Yep. And it makes a 2-2 zombie. Trigger. Trigger. So... That's pretty strong. Sir Conrad is just a very good card. It's not so. Yeah. You put him in the right decks. He's so strong. And this is the right deck. Absolutely nuts. This is a deck where like, oh, I untap with Sir Conrad. All right. Everybody mills five. Like, I'm just going to take my turn. Fill my graveyard a little bit. You guys are going to take like so much, um, so much damage. So I'm imagining uh, Sir Conrad is like the hidden commander in this deck because he's so good in the deck. Uh, like he's the secret little guy in the deck. So he's riding on his horse. And on the back is like the skeleton man to mind, like, yeah, let's go. He's got, <laughs> but he's like grabbing onto Sir Conrad's chest because he's a little scared. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's got, a, he's holding on real tight. Yeah, real tight. Uh, last, uh, winning the game card, Altar of Dementia. We're making a lot of stuff here. So this is kind of for those states where maybe you get the combat trigger off Kamal, but you can't attack or you attack and you kill someone. Well, now you got how many five fives? How many uh, Aristocrat Sir Conrad triggers? Like, what's happening? Did they Mesmeric Orb this game? Mill them for, like, 60 and then take out someone else or the last player if you're about to win. Exactly. If there's three players left and you can kill one with attacks and one with an Altar Dementia, it's totally totally going to work. Or you can just pick a player and just be like, okay, he's going to win next turn. Maybe I have to sacrifice my board, but if he's not out of the game, I'm just dead anyway, so what's it matter? And, oh, man, it's a sack outlet. And, oh, it fills your graveyard. Wow, this card is so good. Yes, so many synergies in this deck. Um, but those are all of our win cons, and that's actually the whole deck. Yes, uh, we got some stats to report. Yes, ooh. Okay, there wasn't really a budget, but we did not go over our $60 uh, maximum for a card. We only spent $73 on this deck, and I will tell you right now that 20-something of it was Field of the Dead. Stop it! So <laughs> really only like $50 plus a Field of the Dead. Uh, the average CMC at first was 2.86, and we raised it a little. It is now 2.95, but that is only because of cards like Cauldron of Eternity and Mulder Hark, Hulk, which don't actually cost 12 and 9. They cost 2 and 2. Okay, so if you guys you guys no longer have to pay for tune-ups, because guess what? All you have to do is put Feel the Dead in your deck, because that's all BC's going to do. <laughs> you still require payment for tune-ups. <laughs> and only 24 changes. This deck was pretty rock solid. I made the cuts of creature ramp instead of non-creature ramp. Everything's a creature if we can. We have more synergy with moving creatures around in the graveyard. But that is actually our video now. This deck is so sweet. Yes. Oh my god! Yeah, it is. Uh, special shout outs to every single one of our patrons, even Arthur, even Arthur. Yeah, even even Arthur. Like he's like like we didn't forget about you either, buddy. Uh, we love you all as much as we can. Without making you uncomfortable, you guys are the poopy babies because we you guys are just so awesome. And thank you again. Yes, yeah, so you can check out the link we have for you in the description. If you don't want to support us via Patreon, click the link. Check out on TCGPlayer.com. When you check out and buy cards, they send us money, zero extra charge for you, free money for us. Yes, exactly. You don't pay anything extra. You're buying the cards. You already plan to buy. You're going to buy magic cards. You're a magic player. We all buy magic cards. In fact, you know, I'm thinking, you're probably, Arthur, you're probably going to buy all these cards. Go to the TCG Buyer link in the description below and spend that money and help support the nitpicking nerds. And more than you already have. Which you're actually helping us a ton. I mean, I mean anyone who goes to Patreon, no matter how little or how 
high an amount you can put. Yeah, whatever you think the amount so is, helpful. it's it's of maximum help to us. Yes, I mean, this is the whole goal is to get this to a full-time job so we can keep providing this daily content. We can upgrade the studio. We can bring you gameplay. We can get a new place to live. Yeah, we can get a new place where we can we can um do the game show, which we Oh, yeah. That's going to be our tidbit for today. That's a tidbit. Let's, let's, tip it. let's jump right into the tidbit. We actually recorded the whole game show with three guest celebrities, and it ended up having a recording error, and it yeah. was real sad. It was a big bummer because it was all like, we did it, high five, and then we get home, and we go to export it, and it's like, this is unusable. I was very I'm angry. We were I, not happy. I was very angry. I, I definitely let my emotions get the best of me that day. I was like... Peeved. Like, I was legitimately just like, this is months in the making. Please stop talking to me. I just want to be alone for like an hour. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I went and took a walk. I don't even know if you noticed. Probably didn't, but I went and took like a 10 minute walk. But uh, we got everybody back. The guests are lined up. Same guests. That Those guys are super awesome. We can tell them who they are. I think that, I think because they've all agreed, we can tell them who the guests are. So at the bare minimum, tentatively, they've all agreed to the reshoot. And then someone might have a scheduling error. But as far as I can tell, Expected at the following, the first ever Chance for Glory game show. Uh, who is it? Uh, Andy Hall of Commander's Brew, who is awesome. And he, we have so many inside jokes from you. You guys don't even know about Mighty Circle Guy. <laughs> you don't even know. They never will. <laughs> uh, we also have Torolf Toffel Toffelson. Severin? Severin. Not Toffelson. Toffelson. His name last name is Toffelson. No, it isn't. But he's on of Arena Boys and Mythic. Champion yeah, because fame, and uh, he gave me permission to say because Riley Knight wasn't available. We'll be saying it. We'll be saying it. And then Aspiring Spike was the last one. Yeah, Aspiring Popular Spike. Streamer. Yeah, he's a streamer. Does a lot of modern. That's all I said. Toffle's a pro player and Commander's Brew guy. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Andy. He doesn't watch our videos anyway. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not even watching right now anyway. He probably clicked off at the picture credits. Like click else. on. We're yeah. done though. <laughs> yeah, we are done. Peace out, Tribe Scout.